Live. Hello. No one's here yet. Oh. Hi, everyone. Are we good? Are we live? Are we good to go? Hello, everybody. Well, another week over. We've all made it through the week, which is amazing. I hope everybody is well. Um, welcome to my kitchen. Welcome to the Friday Night Curry Club. I hope everybody's have a lovely week. I hope you're raring to go. Um, I'm going to do my usual, give you all a little bit of time to log in and make sure that we're all um, on the same page. Um, as always, I ask you to give me a little shout, let me know where you are tuning in from, um, let me know where in the world you are, let me know if you're cooking, let me know if you're just watching. Um, ask any questions. This is your opportunity to get as much information out of me as you possibly can. Um, so please do make the most of it. As I said, I hope everybody is safe. I hope everybody's well. I hope you've had a good week and you've managed to do everything that you need to do with this very weird time that we're going through at the moment. Um, so I've started to do these live um, <coughs> Friday night curry clubs just to give you a little bit of inspiration, hopefully help you through a difficult time so that you can cook along with me, we can do something fun on a Friday night together and you end up with a lovely meal to enjoy with your family at the end of it, which is always a good sign. Um, I hope you've all got a drink. It is Friday, so I've got my little glass of Prosecco, my first one of the week. Would you happen to believe it? Um, so cheers to you all. I hope everything's going well. Um, do give me a shout out, like I said, let me know if you're cooking, let me know where you are um, viewing from, let me know if you've got any questions or anything before we get going because I can help in any way that, that you want me to. So, who have we got today? Tracy Ross, who's here, Pittsburgh. Hi Tracy, lovely to have you join us. I think this is the first one that you've joined since, um, since we used to do them on the app, so welcome, lovely to have you. Jared is here again from last week from Cape Hi, Town. Hi, Jared from Cape Town. Never been to Cape Town. It is somewhere that Kenya. I would love to go. Kenya, Spain, Italy. Quite a few oh, we've Italy. got lots of people from Italy. Hi, guys. Australia. I hope you're all well. We've got people from... Australia. We've got any names of people from Australia? Hello. What time Lois. is it? Let me know what time it is. Who's that? Lois. Hi, Lois from Australia. Lovely to have you join us. What time is it where you are? Christine um, from down the road is saying she doesn't believe it's the first Prosecco of the week. Hi, Christine from down the road. Lovely to have you join us. It is my first Prosecco of the week. I assure you, I've had a couple of glasses of red wine, but it's my first Prosecco. So, there. Um, who else have we got? Jackie from Chicago. Richard Hi, Jackie Germany. from Chicago. We've got... Richard in Germany. Richard in Germany. Hello. Lovely to have you join us. Apocalypse is watching, they're not feeling well, so they're watching you oh. on the east coast of the states. Oh, you're not feeling very well, Apocalypse, I hear. Um, sending you lots of love, sending you lots of good, good vibes and hope you get better soon. Um, but thank you for tuning in and thank you for joining us. Okay, so just to get you going, just to get you started, we are cooking a lamb boona today. Um, as I said in the posts, you can obviously make this with chicken, you can make it with vegetables, it's you can make it with paneer. It's 3.20 in the morning in Australia. And, and you're joining us. Oh my goodness, welcome. <laughs> I hope this doesn't make you too hungry. I'm assuming you're not cooking and you're just watching. But thank you and welcome, even though it is a ridiculous hour of the morning. Um, Alan has asked. Oh, I've got a question before I carry on. Um, he's lucky to have lots of Asian supermarkets and friends. Quick question, finding it difficult to get mutton, is there much different in taste to, to lamb? Um, so the question is about mutton and lamb and the difference and so on. So mutton is just basically an older animal. Um, mutton is delicious, but it is really about how you cook it. So mutton needs that low, slow cook and the flavour that you get from it is amazing. Um, 
if you can't get hold of it, then obviously lamb. Um, goat meat is a, is a good alternative as well. Um, it's quite lean, um, but it's got a really nice flavour. Um, there is a difference in flavour because obviously it's an older animal, so it's, you know, the muscles have worked a little bit harder. So it's, it has got a different flavour. It's going to taste a little bit more mature if that's not that's probably not the right way to describe it um so there is a difference lamb is obviously much more seasonal and um it cooks much more quickly um ideally you just have to use what you can get hold of a lot of butchers if you order it beforehand they will get it in for you um so just ask your butcher because sometimes they can do that for you okay so getting started then lambuna um, as I said, you can make this with chicken. I think there's a few of you who have already said that you're going to be cooking it with chicken. Um, it's great with things like chickpeas. It's great with really nice, robust um, vegetables, aubergine, potato, that kind of thing, because this is very much about the sauce. So a boona is more about the style of cooking rather than the actual dish itself. So a boona or the word buna is actually to bun. To bun something means to sort of fry it and roast it and, 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 and mix it and stir it. And that's what intensifies that gravy and flavor. And that's what we do right at the end of this dish. So to get us going, um, I'm gonna do it in a slightly different order from the way that it's um, been put in the uh, recipe because I wanna get the onions on and I wanna get those cooking and sweating and browning and getting nice and dark in color before um, we we sort of start with someone, the spices and so on. Can, well, someone said, what cut of lamb do they ask for at butchers? And then is lamb breast, can they use lamb breast instead of the leg? Um, so the question is about what cut of meat. I'm using neck fillet here. You can use leg meat. Breast is, again, very, very fatty, but, but and, and you don't get a lot of meat on it, but you can use lamb breast if you wanted to it will produce a very very fatty end dish so just be mindful of that um i th i said i said the last time we cooked lamb that um one of my favorite cuts for a curry is the neck fillet because you've got the fat running through it which keeps it really tender and really really moist but you can use leg shoulders really good just trim the fat away um it needs a lower slower cook um, but neck fillet is, is good because it cooks much more quickly. Okay, so just to go through what I've got here, I've got my onions, I've got my spices, and I'll talk you through those in a minute. I've got my lamb, which is nice and diced up, and I've diced it up quite small, so hopefully that will help in the cooking process. I've got my garlic, I've got my ginger, I've got my dried chilies, these little beautiful, beautiful little looking things. Um, I've also got some curry leaves. Now, a lot of you have said that you couldn't get hold of curry leaves, and I, all, all I will say is, for the time being, just miss them out. If you can't get hold of them, it's fine. Um, you can get curry leaves dried. Um, they are a really good alternative. Um, this is what curry leaves look like. I didn't have any fresh. These are from my freezer. Um, I couldn't get any fresh either. So curry leaves are, are very much a South Indian um, ingredient. They come in these beautiful fronds of leaves um, and when you toast them they give a really nice nutty aromatic so if you can't get hold of them do you know what for the time being just miss it out it'll still taste amazing it might miss something but it will still taste amazing so don't be put off when it comes to Indian food don't be put off if you haven't got the exact ingredients that it says on that on that um, the recipe list because you can quite often substitute things in and so on and i know uh, the way things are at the moment it's quite difficult to get hold of a lot of the ingredients so don't be put off just give it a go anyway so these are my curry leaves um i've got a tin of tomatoes i've got my water and the first thing i'm going to do is just try to get my onions Sugi, on Sugi said your onions are enormous when um, you are cooking a curry, the, the camera probably is making them look enormous. They're not that big, they're just normal onions, maybe slightly medium, medium-ish size. Um, when you're cooking a dish like this, when you are cooking a lamb dish, you can get away with adding a lot more onion because the meat almost needs that extra bit of masala that, that you're gonna create with the extra onions. 
if you were doing this with a chicken dish you don't need as many onions and, and things like that will will come to you the more you start to cook the Indian dishes um, and you'll start to sort of familiarize yourself with what the masala looks like and what the sauce looks like and so on so I'm just going to get these um, in and starting to brown I'm going to use my very trusted lovely bit of kit which loads of you have just been in touch saying that you think it's amazing it is amazing so DC Morris from France who sent me this I thank you again so I'm just gonna just shove them all in there and just chop them up um, not very chefy but that's because we're at home on a Friday night and we're trying to chill out and enjoy ourselves and have a Jim has said he wants to buy your slow cooker cookbook, but has read about the fact that it's made for the American market and measures on vegetables with American equivalent. Um, so the slow cooker cookbook, my slow cooker cookbook, is um, it was designed for the US market. Um, the names of the vegetables, so rather than saying courgette, they say zucchini in there and all of that kind of stuff. Um, it's quite easy and quite um, easy to translate into US. The, the measurements are in both um, US measurements and UK. So I wouldn't worry too much. Um, I don't know. There's quite a few of you guys who've got the book. So please let him know what you think. You know, if you if you think that's a valid point, then then let him know, otherwise tell him what your experiences are. So please do have a little chat amongst yourselves. Um, so my onions, I'm gonna get them nice and fine. I love this gadget, it is amazing. I'm gonna get that in to my pan because I want those to brown and get really nice and golden. For those of you who have done classes with me in the past, you will know that I quite often say it's all about the onions. Whenever you are cooking an Indian dish, especially a dish that's got a masala to it, a dish that is um, a curry dish, it is all about the onions. So how you treat your onions will define how your curry comes out at the end um, because that's your base, that is your flavour, that's where your all the good stuff's going to come from. Can you buy your gadget in the UK? You can buy this in the UK. You can buy it on Amazon. Um, as I said, a lot of you have been in touch um, about where to get them from. Just Google it. Go onto Amazon. Have a look. Handheld blender. The only bit of advice I will give you is make sure it's got two blades. And I'll show you. Once I've finished this, I'll show you what I mean. So it needs to have a blade at the bottom that spins round and a blade at the top because otherwise you don't get that fine cut. So look at that. Easy peasy. So that's what I mean. It's going to have two rows of blade. So I'm going to get that onion in. There we go. I'm going to start to cook. Oh. get the last bit of that out right so the onions gone in I wanted to do that first because as I said it is all about the onions so we what we want is a lovely bit of color um, we want the onions to get really nice and dark so because this is a lambuna it is about that really deep dark rich masala so we want those onions to start cooking now what i do whenever i'm doing a dish like this i will put in my oil i'll put it on a really high heat and i'll get my onions going in there i will start to cook that away um, and what happens is when you've got it on that high heat all of the 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 gases and all the acrid stuff that get into your eyes and make you cry that comes through first um, as that's cooking away once you start to get a little bit of the onion sort of just catching just turn it down a little bit and then it just needs to simmer away um, the one thing that I probably whenever I do my sessions and my classes I try to teach people is how you treat your onions at this stage will define what your dish tastes like at the end so 
if you don't give your onions the time and the love that they deserve now, your dish will never ever have that depth of flavor that you're looking for. So we want those onions, especially in this case for this lamb buna, we want those onions to be really dark, really caramelized and really, really rich in um, all of the flavors that they're gonna pull together. So if your onions catch, all you do is a little splash of water and you keep it going. So generally we want our onions to cook for probably about 20 to 30 minutes, just them sort of simmering away, sauteing in the, in the oil, just doing what they're doing. Um, one of the biggest things that I'm told is that by a lot of my students is I'd never cook my onions for that long because I'd, you know, most people will cook them for about three or four minutes and then start putting everything else in. You are never going to get the flavour that you're looking for. So please, if there's one thing that you take away from me today, make sure you put the effort and the time in to cook your onions properly and you'll what, get amazing flavours. What kind of oil do you use? So the oil that I tend to cook with um, is rapeseed oil. That's what I use. It works better at higher temperatures. It doesn't break down like um, a lot of other um, oils do. So there's no point using an olive oil or anything like that. So just a, a rapeseed oil, a vegetable oil, anything like that um, is what you're looking for. So I'm stirring it because I want, I want to get rid of those... <laughs> I was going to say fumes, but that's not what I mean. Um, so we'll keep stirring it and as soon as it starts to catch a little bit of water goes in and we'll continue to cook that okay so the next thing we need to get ready is our um, ginger and our garlic which is again going to go into that in a minute so I have got my cloves of garlic here and I'm using and it sounds like a lot but I'm using six um, again it's the same principle this is a lamb dish it's, it, it needs that sort of extra bit of deliciousness so i'm going to use um, six cloves of garlic if you're cooking a vegetable dish you probably don't need that many so you can turn it down a little bit depending on what you're doing um, i'm just going to chop these up nice and finely and again i could have put it into my blender but i'll just chop these up um, can you could there are some see inside your pan yep you can and see it in my also, pan can you talk about Oh, Finn's here. Say hello to Finn, like my friend Finn. Hi, Finn. How are you doing? Lovely to have you join us. And people are saying red onions, white onions. Okay, so we're getting a few questions about onions and the colour of your onion. Now, when I cook, um, I generally use what I think the US call a brown onion. Um, and it's just a normal, uh, in my head, it's just a normal onion. In India, a normal onion, is it, it's got a slight pinky tinge to it. So it's not actually a red onion, but it's got this pinky tinge to it. And that's what an Indian onion um, looks like. So generally, either a brown onion, a white onion, or a, a, a pink onion is absolutely fine. Um, one thing I will say is the finer you dice your onion, um, the better your um, masala will come out because all the onions will cook at the same sort of rate. What you don't want are great big chunky bits of onion, little tiny bits because the tiny bits will burn and the big bits won't, won't cook through. So if you want to have a look in my pan, you're going to have to show me, tell me if you can see. Yep. Can we see in the pan? Yep. Yeah. So that's what it's looking like. And it's starting to dry out now. It's slightly, just starting to catch. And because it's starting to catch, I'm going to add a little bit of water and I'm going to keep that process going. Now, by adding the water, all I'm doing is lifting everything off the bottom of the pan so it doesn't burn. And I'm cooling the pan down a little bit at the same time. Someone's there we go. Asked. Is it all right to pre-caramelize the onions and jar them up ahead of time? So, the question about the onions, absolutely. It's a genius thing to do. So if you want to, you could do this in batches beforehand. 
you could brown off and caramelize your onions and then you could put them in jars and just cover them in oil or you can freeze them um, and just have them ready and then just fish them out as and when you need them absolutely it's a real time saver and it's one of those things that i tell people if you've got the time to do it just do it. Um, if it if it helps you out during your sort of busy week then absolutely do that or the other thing you can do is just make a masala and freeze that and use that as well so I'm going to keep an eye on those a little bit more water have a little drinky and I'm going to carry on with my garlic so I'm just going to chop this up nice and finely and I know it does look like a lot, but I like garlic and I think a lot of people do. Okay, so have we got any new people joining us that we haven't said hello to yet? Have we got people who have told me if they're cooking or not? I think there's a few people who've said they're watching. Have we got anyone who is actually cooking? I know, Sue, you are because you sent a photo through to the app with you raring to go, which was amazing. Um, one thing I will say to you guys is if you are watching or if you're cooking, please do take a little picture and share it with me either on Facebook, on Instagram or on my app. It would be lovely to see what you guys are up to while you're... Uh, enjoying your Friday evening with a glass and hopefully cooking or if not cooking just enjoying the process of somebody cooking a curry there we go well done Christine are you using lamb or are you using chicken Lisa is cooking with chicken so she used less garlic um, so if you're using chicken, probably just you reduce the garlic to about four. Um, are you using meat on the bone or are you using breast or thigh? Because that can make a difference. If you're using breast, I'd probably use a little bit less. Okay, so my garlic is done. I've started to get a little bit of colour. I'll show you in my pan again. I've started to get a little bit of colour in my, on my onions. which is looking good. Do you want to see my pan? Shall I show you in my pan? Okay. So that's what my pan looks like. And now I've got a bit of color in there. I'm also going to add garlic in. So have you all got your garlic ready? If so, Let's get it in. There we go. Lovely. I'm going to give that all a stir through. So, if you're cooking with me, can you let me know if you're with me? Let me know if I'm leaving you behind or hopefully we're all on the same same bit so far so all we've done is fry some onions and some garlic so hopefully we're all we're all still together okay as soon as that garlic goes in you start to get the aromas coming through which are just lovely um and there we Can go. you give a bit of a lesson to neil he's saying when he chops garlic up it ends up everywhere <laughs> What was that? So Neil's just asked about chopping up garlic. What do you mean it ends up everywhere? It just sort of goes all over the place. Um, it might be to do with your knife. You need to use your knife to keep everything in one place. Um, have I got a little, I don't think I've got a garlic video. I know I've got an onion video, chopping onion video. Um, but I'll have to... I'll have to have a think about that. So we've just had somebody join from Egypt, have we? Who's that? Or have we got... Shireen I apologise, I can't, if I've got your name incorrect there. But welcome, hello, thank you for joining us all the way from Egypt. I hope you're okay, I hope things are good where you are. 
are you cooking or are you just watching please do let me know okay so where we are at the moment we've got the onions in the pan we've got the garlic in the pan and that is just sauteing away and we want that to do its thing um i wanted to do that first because that is the bit that's going to take probably the most amount of time and that's where we want to sort of focus our attention and let that start cooking um i'm just going to move this to the back okay um someone who's our sassy sue has said where can i find the dried red chilies i can't find anywhere so the dried red chilies, if you're struggling to find these, so these are Kashmiri chilies, these are dried red chilies. If you go onto my website, we have all of these spices available. Um, just order them directly from my website and we get them out. Um, the only problem at the moment is that we are having a little bit of a delay with orders going out and that's j literally down to um, the mail service really. Um, but we are having a little bit of a delay, but just come onto the website. We sell these um, and we sell all of the little little um, spices that we use in refill bags. So have a look and, and see if that is what you're looking for. Can you also talk about what knife you're using? My knife? Okay, so I've had a question about my knife. So we talked a little bit about this last week, didn't we? So I tend to use um, Japanese Sentoko knives. Um, we like the, um, or what I, I like is that they're really, really sharp. Um, they're really nice, nicely weighted, so they're not too light and they're not too heavy. These are Tajiro Senko knives, um, as are my, my whole set is, a, is the Japanese Tajiro Senko knives. So have a look at them, you can Google them, they're great. I love them, really nice feel, really nice weight. Um, but it, they apparently use the same method that they use to make um, samurai swords to make these knives. They're beautiful. Anyway, okay, so keep an eye on your onions every time they catch. A little bit of water needs to go in. A lot of people will keep adding oil in and that's not what we want. Because of the type of meat we're using, there's a lot of fat in that meat and that fat is flavour, so we don't want to add any more oil than we need to. Okay, everybody's still with me. Give me a thumbs up, let me know. I'm going to have a little break from talking. How are we doing? All good? Onions cooking away? Okay, so I'm going to move on to the next bit, which is probably the bit that is the most exciting bit. Um, so this is a quite a heavily spiced dish um, and it's it's got lots of aromatics and lots of flavor in there and that comes from the spices that we use so into this i'm going to put in and i'm going to talk you through the measurements for so if you were using up to a kilogram of meat this should be more than enough so i've got three teaspoons of coriander seeds i have got uh, two teaspoons of mustard seeds, got two teaspoons of cumin seeds and two teaspoons of fennel seeds. I've also got a teaspoon of fenugreek seeds. So all of these add something different and I know a few of you said that you couldn't get hold of mustard seeds so I've just said, as I said at the beginning, if you can't get hold of it for the time being just miss it out, it's fine, it doesn't matter. Um, they all add something a little bit different. So um, coriander seeds have got a zinginess. They've got almost like a citrus freshness to them. Um, cumin seeds add a really gentle warming warmth um, to them. They bring out the sweetness of your dish. Um, mustard seeds add a bite. They've got that nose tingling pungency. So that's what they add. And then fennel seeds, they've got a very gentle aniseedy aromatic to them. And then your fenugreek seeds, that's what gives it a bit of pow. Um, it's got a real bitterness, quite a strong, strong um, spice, which is why I've only got um, a teaspoon of those in here. When you're cooking the dish, if you sort of taste it halfway through, you'll taste a bitterness, which means that your fenugreek hasn't cooked through properly. So just bear that in mind that you will need to keep cooking it. I'm going to turn that up a little bit. 
so what I'm going to do with my spices, so those are the, the, the key spices and then also my chilies as well, so the whole, whole red chilies. What we're going to do is we're going to toast these spices and we're going to do that in, I've version? used a wide pan. Is this like your version or your own? Um, a lot of boona, so as I, as I sort of explained at the beginning, a boona is more about the style of cooking rather than the actual dish itself. So yeah, a little bit, this is my version of it. Um, that as with any dish, um, and in particular Indian dishes, depending on where you go, whether you go to a restaurant, whether you've got friends or family or whoever that might be, they will all cook their dish with their own flair and their own sort of ingredients. So absolutely, this is my version of it. Um, and Well, let's hope that you like it. So um, I'm going to heat up that pan. I'm going to toast off these spices. And the, the whole point of toasting your spices is what we're doing is that all of these spices are natural ingredients. They have natural oils that sit within them. And as soon as you toast them, as soon as you apply a little bit of heat to them, what happens is those oils come through and that's what makes your dish so aromatic. So Indian food is all about that layering of flavor. And by doing this, by this process of toasting your spices, you're bringing those aromatics to the forefront and you're changing the flavor of what that tastes like in there compared to what it tastes like when it comes out of that hot pan is very, very different. Um, are you using whole coriander seeds and are you toasting them on a low or a high heat? Okay, so I am, um, when it comes to dishes like this, yes, I tend to use whole spices. So if I, so if, can you see, can you see what they look like? Sure. Lift it up. Can you see now? So that is my spice mix there so yeah absolutely it's all about whole spices and what i'm going to do is i'm going to toast these and then i'm going to put them into my blender and blitz them up um, if you haven't got a blender pestle and mortar just give them a good old bash because as soon as you apply heat to them they become very very brittle so they're much easier to pound as well so yeah always use whole spices the aromatics and the flavor that you get from whole spices compared to what you get from a ground spice a world apart so absolutely i would always recommend whole spices and grind them as and when you need them so my pan i don't want my pan to be too hot because um spices are very they will catch very very easily and they will burn very very easily this is just ticking away um so i don't want my um pan to be too hot but i want it to be warm there's no oil in this pan i'm just dry roasting them um a lot of cookbooks will say when your spices go a shade darker, you then re you then know that, that, that you've done what you need to do to them. It's very, very difficult by eye to tell when a spice has gone a shade darker. So what I, or my rule of thumb is, as soon as you can smell them, as soon as they become aromatic, as soon as they've released their oils, then the heat has done what you wanted it to do. So it's really quite important that you understand that and don't sort of sit there thinking, oh, has it gone a shade darker? I can't tell. What colour mustard seeds do you use? So with Indian food, you tend to use brown or black mustard seeds. Just as rule of thumb, that's what you tend to do. Okay, so my spices are going to go into my pan. And I'm also going to pop my chilies in as well. I'm just going to take the tops off. Now, with Indian food, another little bit that I would like to bring to your attention is Indian food isn't always about let's get it as hot as we possibly can because um, we want to blow our heads off. It's more about the aromatics um, that we are adding to the dish. So it's more about um, flavour, aromatics, but there is also a little bit around when you have an Indian meal, you want to know that you've had an Indian meal. So you do want a little bit of warmth and heat to it. But when you're feeding your family, when you're feeding children, you've always got to cook a dish so that it suits your palate and it suits the family that um, you are trying to feed. So always, always, always cook a dish so that it suits you and it suits your family. So. There's no right or wrong with how hot or spicy a dish should be. If you like your, 
um, if you like your dishes nice and spicy and hot and warming, then add more chili. If you don't like that, then don't add as much chili. So in this dish, I am putting in four chilies because I want something nice and spicy today. Okay, I don't know if you can see the steam off here, but this is already, can you see that? Can you see that lovely? And it just smells really nutty and really toasted and delicious. Okay, so that pan, is hot, I should have left this here. As soon as you've toasted it and you've got it how nice and toasted, always take your spices out of your pan because that pan is still hot and they will continue to toast and when you come back to them, they'll probably be burnt. So always take them out. What can you substitute for the fennel seeds? Um, if you haven't got fennel seeds, or, well, if you don't like fennel, so there's two different questions there. Um, if you if you want to, if you don't have fennel seeds and you want to find a substitute for it, anything with that aniseedy flavour. So you could choose star anise, you could choose um, um, aniseed, anything like that is fine. If you don't like that aniseedy flavour. It's not going to be very strong in this. It's just going to have a hint of that, and it's a blend. It's not about you know pulling certain flavours out. It. I think if it's the flavour that you're worried about, I would give it a try, see what you think, and I think most people can't actually pick it out. So I would urge you to try it first before discounting it. Okay, I'm going to show you the inside of my pan um, where as well. Does from here? So, oh, here we go. I'm just going to show you the inside of my pan. So, again, there's no dish that is a Boona dish, it's, a, it's about a style of cooking. So, you could, there we go. Can you see? They're starting to brown. Um, so it's about style of cooking. It's not actually a regional dish. It's more about if you wanted a dish that's got a lot of flavour, but it, the it's not in a th it's not in a gravy. It's not in a sauce. It's really thick. You then reduce it down. So it's it's not actually a regional thing. It's more about that style. Okay. So my onions are going to carry on and do their thing. So coming back to the spices then. Now, it's quite important that you let your spices cool down a little bit before you toast them. Has everybody got their spices toasted? I would urge you to have a little smell, because they do smell really good, but they also look so pretty. Look at those. Shall we take a little pic? Let's take a little picture of my spices. Take a little photo, just so that I can show you later. go okay so my spices are going to go into into my spice grinder oh mr g's joined us wow welcome i you were in a bit of a grunt weren't you last week you said you were you were going to join us but you didn't welcome lovely to have you join us and are we getting a takeaway today or are we actually going to do some cooking? Hmm. I don't know. Okay. So the spices go into your blender and we're just going to blitz those up to a fine powder. Um, if you haven't got a spice grinder, as I said, pestle and mortar is, is just as good. So have a look. When you take the lid off, because you've got chilies in there, it's going to go right up your nose and you're going to start to sneeze. Um, so just sort of be a bit careful. As soon as you start to grind, you start to get those aromatics coming through. It's so beautiful. 
Yum. Right, can you let me know if you're starting to get a little bit of colour on your onions now? Because it just helps me gauge how far along you all are. have a look. Try a little spoon. Oh, it smells amazing. So I'm just going to show you. you. Can you see in there? Beautiful colour. And that colour's come from the chilli. Really lovely. Okay. So my onions have started to do what they need to do. Everything's starting to come together into my onions. Um, my garlic. I'm also going to add my curry leaves and I, as I said before if you don't have your curry leaves then don't worry about it. So the curry leaves are going in. Have you added the garlic yet? Yes, so the garlic's all gone in with the um, onions. And before I add my spice, I'm just going to start to get my ginger ready. So I've got a little bit of ginger here and I'm just going to grate that. And I tend to use the skin and everything, just grate it. You know me, well, if you don't know me, you will do by the end know that I do not like to waste anything. It's a running joke with my friends that I will literally come home with their garbage and use that but I don't like to waste anything so just gonna grate that all up and what you will find is if you are using a really fresh piece of ginger the skin will just grate with it if it's slightly older you'll just get these bits left in your hands and you can just throw that away if you want to Let's see I didn't use it right so that's ready as well so the ginger's ready my curry leaves have gone in, my spices are ready, all I'm waiting for is that lovely dark colour to come through and it's looking, my, my onions are looking pretty good, can you guys give me an indication as to how you're feeling about say, your onions? Some people they're good and brown almost done, some people are saying a bit of colour but not quite there yet. Okay. That's good to know. So some of you are nearly there. Some of you are almost there. I'm just going to show you the inside of my pan again. Let's have a little look. Are we there? Is that what yours is looking like? Let me know. Okay, right. So is everybody happy? Any more questions whilst I'm taking a little breather? Someone said, what encouraged you to go down the cooking route? What encouraged me to go down the cooking route? Well, there's a story. I don't really know. <laughs> I don't really know. Um, so I've always cooked. It's just something that, that, that we do. Um, as I was growing up, we all sort of cooked together, um, quite often made to do the jobs that I didn't really want to do, like make the dough for the rotis and all of that kind of stuff. Um, it was never a career choice. It wasn't, it wasn't a, what's the word, an intentional career choice to, to go down the food sort of world. Um, I'm actually a scientist by training, so I'm a biologist, I'm a food microbiologist. Um, I used to work for Unilever um, in their food production sites. And then I worked for Tesco as a corporate marketeer for about 12 years, um, which was amazing, great company to work for. Um, and it was, all, it was all good fun. And then I started to do this on the side once I had the kids and family and all of that kind of stuff. Um, and it just sort of very slowly took over. Um, so, what 
grater am I using? This is a Joseph Joseph grater. It's really quite cool. So you've got, it goes straight. And then what else? Actually, this is quite cool. The cover, so that's the cover to keep it safe. You then turn it backwards and then you can actually grate into the thing. It's very cool. I love a bit of kitchen equipment. It's very sad, I know. Okay, right, so uh, have you all caught up? Is everybody with me now? So, step number two, what we're going to do is, um, where are we? Spices. Okay, so, when your onions are nice and dark and brown and you're happy, into that, we are going to add our tomatoes. So, I've got a tin of tomatoes here, just 400 grams of tin tomatoes, plum tomatoes I tend to prefer just because they are they just give a really nice thick gravy so I've just put a little bit of water in back to the the bit about I don't like to waste anything I know just swirl that out and if you turned your pan down during the cooking of the onions it's time to turn it back up because you've just put your tomatoes in there which are cold so it's going to cool that pan right down, whack it right up to a nice high heat and start stirring it away. Okay, so at this point you've added your liquid to the dish, which means you can start to add your second stage of spices. So your second stage of spices are always your taste and your colour spices. So those are the spices that are going to give you taste and colour. So when your liquid goes in, your taste and colour spices are pretty much always ground spices. So your spices that you've ground up can go in. I'm not going to put them all in. I've actually put in half because I think it's quite a lot of spice. If you've got some leftover as well, just pop that into a jar and you can, um, with a nice tight lid and you can use that next time. Grated ginger, that goes in. And I'm going to put some turmeric in, just a teaspoon. And I'm also going to put a little bit more of ch that chilli powder in. You don't have to do that if you've already ground up your um, chilies and you don't want it any hotter. You don't have to do that. If, on the other hand, you want it a little bit hotter, then now is the time to chop up some fresh green chilies and add those as well. I'm probably going to put one in just because... It's Friday and it's one of those days where I want something nice and spicy. Yes? If they have used fresh tomatoes, do they need to add more water? Um, if you have used fresh tomatoes and they are not very ripe, i.e. they haven't got that lovely juiciness to them, then absolutely put in some more water because that will help the tomatoes to start breaking down. The other thing that you can do just to help is put a little bit of tomato puree in as well um, because that will also help with the colour and the vibrancy of the dish. Okay, so turmeric's gone in, your spice mix has gone in. Um, I'm also going to add my chilli. Ginger's gone in and we just need to season with a little bit of salt, which I haven't got ready here, so I'm going to grab some. And I'm going to have to empty it out there. So I'm just going to add some salt. Now, my temperature is on quite a nice high temperature. And I'm just going to show you, I'm going to put a little bit more salt in. Um, Someone said, why do some recipes say to fry the spices for a minute in the onions before add the tomatoes? Can you repeat that, please? Why, why do some, some recipes, recipes say, say to fry the spices for a minute in the onions before the tomatoes are added? I don't know why some recipes say that. That's just, it's different people. So different people cook in different ways. I'm not going to say one method is correct, one method is, is um, not correct. It depends on what you're doing. So um, generally when I cook, I add my spices in three different stages. So the first stage is um, when you add your whole spices, which it will be you toast them in some oil and then you add your onions in. So that's your first stage of spices. 
And again, it depends on what kind of a dish you're doing. Um, the second stage of spicing is once your liquid has gone in, you then add your taste and your colour spices. And then the final stage of spicing is when you add your delicate aromatics and your um, delicate herbs and that kind of thing. Um, so that's the general principle. Does that, does that help? Um, so whenever you're cooking a normal dish, that's how you would spice it. But it really depends on the dish because not every single dish has spices that you add at the beginning and not every single dish. So the question is, does it make it a difference adding your spices before the tomatoes to after the tomatoes have gone in? The reason that um, I add my second stage of spices, which are my ground spices, once the liquid has, once the tomatoes have gone in, is because if you add your spices beforehand, they are much more likely to burn because they're a powder, because they ground down and you put them into a dry pan, they're much more likely to burn um, and resulting in a slight bitterness. So that's why you add your tomatoes and then you put your um, um, and so spices you in. So I haven't put the whole lot in. I might add a little bit more. So I've used half of mine just because it looked like quite a lot was going in, but I'm just gonna just have a little check now. I want to show you inside my pan. Mr. G said, are you ordering any poppadoms? Mr. G, I'm not ordering any poppadoms. I have got some in the cupboard though. I might get those out, um, but no, it's not something that I would order. Okay, look. So already, that hasn't been cooking for long, but already the tomatoes have broken down and it's all starting to come together. Is that what yours looks like? Please let me know. Okay, I am going to now, I am going to put a little bit more in. So I've got... Lovely. Right. So this essentially is your masala. This is your base. Your tomatoes have broken down, your onions have broken down. It's not watery, it's not caught on the bottom, it's really thick and it's really, really luxurious. Say hello to Tread the Globe. Say, Say hello to Tread the Globe. Hi Tread the Globe, you've joined us. Hello, lovely to have you join us. I hope you are well over in Istanbul, still on lockdown, I hear. Um, thank you for joining me again. Please let me know if you've tried any more of the dishes because... I know that you're trying to be experimental. Lovely to have you join us. I hope everything is well and I hope you're safe. Um, okay, so the masala is looking, it's smelling amazing. So that is what we're looking for, a really thick masala base. Into that, this is when you add your meat, okay? So my meat is gonna go in and it's going in at a really high heat because what I'm going to do is I'm gonna sear this meat in that masala. So that goes in, that goes away, and then we start to just break it all down. Now, if you are using chicken or if you're using um, vegetables, it's really, really, really important that your masala is thick and delicious and it's all come together because um, especially with vegetables, they're not gonna take a lot of cooking in terms of the time required. Um, if you are using a mixture of vegetables, make sure you put your hardy vegetables in first. So your potatoes would go in now. Um, because there's not as, as much moisture coming out of them, you might need to put a little splash of water in. And then you will need to add the different vegetables depending on how long they cook for. If you chuck everything in now, you're gonna have bits that are raw and bits that are overdone. Um, so make sure your masala is really thick and on point, if that's the right way of describing it. Um, Sue said hers is very brown. It's very brown? Yeah. So, so Sue's just said that her masala is very brown, which is a good thing. Um, mine's looking slightly more red, and that's probably because I've added more of those chilies in there. The chilies that we use, the dry chilies, are really about that colour and the warmth that they give. So... It's good, Sue, that's all good. Are you saying that it's brown in a negative way or do you mean that it's, it's, it's looking good? So let me know. Okay, so my meat is all coated in that masala. I'm gonna show you what it looks like. Someone said, your lamb madras is the best in the world. 
Oh, thank you. I'm glad you like that lamb madras. Can you see in the pan? There we go. So it's all coated. It's not watery. It's not, you know, everything is really thick and delicious. So my flame at the moment is still high. As soon as that meat goes in, you want it really high. You're sauteing that meat off. You're sort of trying to get a bit of color to that meat. And then what I'm going to do is once it's all coated, once there's a little bit of heat has got onto that meat, then I'm gonna turn it down, put the lid on, and that's gonna take probably about 30 to 40 minutes to cook. I'm now gonna turn the heat down because I want this to simmer away really, really gently. As you're saying, they're loving your orange top, you're colour coordinating with your spatula. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I am. I think I need to invest in some new spatulas. This is probably my last one now, so I need to do that. But um, thank you, that's very kind of you, very lovely of you. I am quite a, a red, orange, those are sort of maroon. Those are my sort of colours. That's what I tend to tend to wear most of the time. Okay, is everybody with me? Has everyone got their lid on their pan and it's cooking and it's doing its thing? Um, if you were using chickpeas, they could go in. And if you're using chickpeas, obviously, yeah, it's not going to take very much more in terms of time to cook. Um, vegetables, if you were using potatoes, you probably need your potatoes to cook for a while. I would say about 10 to 15 minutes and then you add your other ingredients into there. If you're using chicken on the bone, um, same principle, but it's going to take slightly less time to cook. If you were using chicken off the bone, then again, that's going to take about 20 minutes. Leave it, do exactly the same process. Um, so are we all good? Is everyone still with me? Are we all on the same page? Simmering away. Simmering away. I need to have a little drink. I feel a bit out of breath. Are we all good? It's very quiet today. Have we had any new people join us? Have we got anyone new to say hello to? Right, I'm going to have a little clear down. Okay, so our curry is going to do what it needs to do. I'm going to show you a very quick rice dish as well. Um, this is a rice dish that has got cumin and peas in it. Um, we talked a little bit about, I mean, obviously not everyone who was here last time or the time before that. So we cooked rice last time. I'm just going to go over the basics with you. Um, rice is the one thing that I get probably asked the most about because either you mess it up all the time or you've got your way of doing it and, that, and that's, that's what you stick to. And that's absolutely fine. If you've got a method that suits you and you get it right every time and you're happy, brilliant stick with it don't change it um, the way that I cook rice um, if I'm doing just plain boiled rice I will measure out one mug I'll go back to my cupboard so a mug like that will feed three people so a normal tea mug will feed three people so I'll measure out one mug um, and it's always twice the amount of water to rice by volume so one mug of, of rice two mugs of water okay the other thing you need to do is you need to wash your rice until the water runs clear and i'm going to do that in a minute in fact i'll start doing that now just to show you so when you wash your rice you just very very gently what you don't want to do is squish that rice and break it up because the more you squish it and the more you sort of aggravate it the more you're going to break it and the more starch you're going to lose. So if you see that already, it's really grey and murky. Okay, so you need to wash your rice until that water runs clear. So that normally takes about four washes. So I'll pour it away. And I will refill. And if you've ever been on a class with me, this is the bit that takes a long time and people start fighting over the tap and all of that fun stuff. So just very gently 
put your hands through it. So what you're doing is you are washing the rice because there's lots of starch, excess starch, and that's what makes your rice stodgy. Um, rice is also aged, so it's kept for a long time before you actually get it into your kitchen. So it's a good idea to wash it. It also has trace levels of arsenic in it, so it's also another reason to wash your rice. So this is the third wash, and you can see it's still pretty murky. Just going to do that again. So this is the fourth wash, and now you can start to see it's starting to get clear. Yeah, it's starting to clear up a little bit. If you have got a method that you use that's different to mine, please do share it because I, it always intrigues me how different people will cook their rice. So please do share. Um, Kathy said a couple of questions. Should fenugreek be bitter so hence the recipe for old? And can you also talk about making brown rice? Yes. Okay. I'm just going to wash it one more time. So fenugreek. So someone's just asked a question about fenugreek. Should it be bitter? Does it mean that my um, spices are old? So the overriding flavour that you get from fenugreek seeds is bitterness. That is what it adds to your food. It adds a pungency and it adds bitterness. So they should be bitter. Um, obviously store them in a way that they're away from a direct heat source, away from a light source. Um, and use them as and when you need them. They are one of those spices that you would only ever use in very, very specific dishes. So there's probably a handful of dishes that I use them in. It's not something that um, is used a lot all the time, but yes, it should be, they should be bitter, which is why you have to be really careful with them. Never ever overdo it with um, fenugreek because they will completely overpower your dish. So make sure that um, if you are using it, you use it carefully. So we used a teaspoon in this dish and two thirds of the spice mix have gone in there and that's, I would say, about 800 grams of lamb in there. I've got that much left. So, you know, you don't need a lot of it. It will add bitterness. So I'm just gonna have a quick look at my pan and I urge you to do the same. So, one thing I didn't mention is we spent all this time making this lovely masala what a lot of people tend to do is when they've made their masala they will add their meat and then they'll throw loads of water in there and they'll put the lid on and let it simmer away so you've just spent probably a good 20 to 30 minutes making a really intense masala cooking those onions down browning them getting all of the lovely um, caramelized flavor coming through you chuck your meat in you dilute it with loads of water and you just let your meat boil away in this water that's not what you need to do. It's really, really important that when you've got that masala really nice and thick, you put your meat in, you turn it down to the lowest setting, you put your lid on and you let it cook. You want your meat to pick up the flavour of the masala, not to not add water so that it's all diluted. What I want to show you is once that um, meat has gone in, look at the juices that have come out of that. So we've added no liquid to this and all of that gravy and all of that lovely sauce has come from the meat itself. That is where you are going to get your flavour from and that is where you're going to get that delicious unctuousness from. So I'm just going to give it a stir and I'm going to continue to let that cook. It already smells pretty good. Oh, I'm happy with that. So that's going to do its thing. Okay, so we've washed our rice. Any more questions, sorry, whilst we're... Oh, there's a question about brown rice. Okay. I'm just going to move this over so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so brown rice is, is a slightly different method because... Um, so brown rice, just in its nature, a lot of people think it should taste the same as white rice. It doesn't. It has a... It will always have a slight chewiness to it. So what you need to do with brown rice or... 
I suppose the easiest method with brown rice is um, you can wash it, you don't need to wash it until the water runs clear, but you can give it a, a rinse through. And you can put it into some boiling water um, and let it just boil through for a while. And then you need to then turn it down, put the lid on and let it sort of simmer away for about 25 minutes. Um, you can then taste it and check it and it should have, it should be cooked through, but it should have that um, um, slight bite to it, slight chewiness. If you've still got water remaining in your pan, you can then sieve that out and then put your rice back into the pan and put the lid on and just let it steam for about five to 10 minutes. And that way you won't get gloopy, clagged up rice. It will be um, perfectly cooked. So does that help? Is that what you were looking for? Okay, so I'm going to move on and show you how to make this rice. So a little bit of oil goes into the pan. We're going to infuse um, some cumin seeds into this um, and I'm also going to cook it with some peas. So what you can do if you want to, you could slice up an onion, you could add the onion in there. In fact, shall we do that? Let's do that. Seeing as, um, seeing as I'm here, I may as well show you how to do that. This chopping board, are you loving my chopping board? That was a birthday present from my very lovely husband. God, I can't even remember how long ago. Um, and when we bought it, it was probably, probably twice the size it is now. And just over the years, it's just shrunk because of the heat and, you know, and I, we do oil it and so on, but it's just shrunk over the years, which is, crazy isn't it okay so I'm gonna put I'm gonna put an onion in here um are you, are you guys cooking rice with me I don't know if you are because I know it's what water I, ratio do you use with brown rice so with brown rice it's like you can just put you can just boil it in open open water you don't have it, it's not ever going to absorb the way that white rice does so just freely put in a lot more rice with with white rice it will all absorb whereas brown rice won't. Okay, right. So, I'm going to, shall we dice it, shall we slice it? Let's dice it. Okay, so I'm just gonna put half an onion in. I'm not gonna put a whole one. I will have that with my curry later. Um, I love raw onion with my curry much to my husband's annoyance, but it's just lovely. Okay, this onion's fallen to pieces, brilliant. So with this, all we're going to do is just saute um, an onion with a few spices. So this, I'm not bothered about having chunky bits. If you don't, if, I'm, I'm not being precise about that because I'm just gonna saute it in here. So into that, we've got some cumin seeds. So I'm gonna put in a teaspoon of cumin seeds did anybody say they were cooking rice with me today? Jared's cooking rice. Hi, Jared, you're cooking rice. So a teaspoon of cumin seeds go in. Again, same principle, but what we're doing is we're sauteing them in some oil. As soon as you can smell them, as soon as that aromatic comes through, we're going to go in with our onions. Now, with my onion, and when I'm cooking this dish, I don't want to get... I don't want to get any colour to my onions because my rice is white, I want my ending dish to be white, so all I'm doing is just sautéing the raw flavour out of the onion, nothing to, nothing too much. Is anybody cooking a vegetable version or... If you're cooking a vegetable version, can you let me know what you're putting in it? I'd love to know. Let me know, um, you know, if you're using chickpeas, whatever you're using, can you let me know? And um, I think I've said this before, I urge you at the end of this, please take a photo of your dish and share it with me on the app or on Facebook, wherever you want to do it, but just share it with me so I can see. It just really, really helps 
for me to get my head round um you know where you guys are and where you're cooking and what you what you've created it just really helps me so and it's just really nice to see so please do Mr. G, Uncle Ben's, you could have gone for Tilda, just saying. Anyway, so onions, no colour really, just sautéing them off. And then into that I'm going to add my peas. And these are just frozen peas, nothing more spectacular than that. So a lot of the spices in the UK come from India. Um, we, we did have a bit of a discussion about this before. It really depends on um, the brand and, and, and how committed they are. So all of my spices could do, you know, a moat. A lot, of, a lot of the spices like um, Santa Maria and those guys, they will search the globe for the best quality spices. Um, and it is a bit of a, it's one of those funny, funny questions. A lot of the spices that you get here are from India anyway, so. Okay, so my um, rice is I'm washed. Doing a veggie version with tofu and beans. Tofu and beans, what, like green beans? So hopefully that tofu will absorb some of those lovely flavours from the masala. That would be really good. I'd love to see a picture, as I said. Okay, so in here we've got my cumin seeds. Um, we've got some peas. I've put onions in there and they're just sautéing off. And into that we're going to add our rice. Um, one of the other questions I get asked all the time is, do I season or do I not season my rice? funny question um so when i worked at the restaurant absolutely it was always you always season your rice um and if i'm honest it does make it taste really really good but when i'm at home i just i i just think there's there's no need for it it's just a little bit of extra salt when you're cooking it and you're eating rice with a dish like this you don't really need it so it's up to you i'm not going to say there's a right or a wrong. Into the peas, once the peas have gone in, because they're frozen peas, you just need to saute them just to get rid of um, the moisture from them. Once they're in, the rice then goes in, okay? Um, what, brand, what brand of spices do you go to and where do you buy your curry leaves? So, two questions. My curry leaves come from my local Indian grocery shop. Um, they get them in fresh. Um, I'm pretty sure they come from India because they're South Indian. Um, one thing I will say about curry leaves, you need to be really, really careful. There was a little, um, probably about a year or so ago, and they were actually banned into the UK because they had high levels of E. coli on them. So make sure whenever you use curry leaves um, that you wash them and you cook them. So there are chutneys and things like that that you can put raw curry leaves into. I wouldn't recommend you do that. Just saute them, just, just to be on the safe side. So I just want to show you in my pan. So my rice has gone in and all I want to do is very quickly, I'm going to just mix that through. And the reason I'm doing that, I just peed on the floor. Oops. Um, I just want my rice to get coated in the lovely oil that was in that pan. And that's going to, again, help them to, to stay beautifully separate. Right. Does the quality, oh, hang on. Did I ask the question? Yeah. Um, does the quality of the rice taste good? Does what, sorry, I had a question. Quality of the rice. Quality of the rice. Um, with rice, I, I will say, always go for the best quality rice that you can because rice, it does make a difference. Um, the different grades of rice, um, absolutely, 100%, it does make a difference. Okay, so once you have just gone, coated all of your rice, given it a little bit of a stir, 
And then as I said before, add your measured amount of water. I'm just measuring by eye. And then we're gonna bring that up to a rolling boil. That looks about right, a little bit more. So we're gonna bring that up to a rolling boil and then I'm gonna pop the lid on and then that's going to um, cook for about 10 minutes. It's gonna steam away. Um, and then I'm going to add a little bit of saffron in there as well. If you want to add some saffron, um, if you've got some saffron, just take a pinch of your saffron um, and just crumble it if it's nice and dry. If not, you can just put it on a, just put it under a light or something just so that it dries it out. And then you could crumble it into a little bowl and then just add a few splashes of water. Um, and what will happen, it will just steep. The color will just come through. I've got some here that I did just before. Can you see? Can you see in there? Twist. Can you see? So that's that lovely, vibrant colour. So I'm just, I've just got that steeping away. That's sitting there. I'm going to add that into my rice in a minute. Whilst you're waiting for your rice to come up to the boil, just have a little check on your dish. Oh, my God. This looks pretty spectacular. See, Friday nights are made for curry. Sit down, bit of curry, little glass of wine, bit of rice, some naan bread if you like. It's just amazing. And I urge you to try and cook it yourself because I just think there's something amazing about having it just made yourself you will never ever go back to those takeaways mr g you will never go back to those takeaways okay so look at all of the gravy and the sauce that's come from that meat can you see that and we've added no liquid into that so let that continue to do its thing oh it's gonna be so good okay so we'll bring that up to a boil any more questions whilst we are waiting for things to happen any more questions any more questions oh, getting a little top up don't spill it <laughs> he's very camera shy there you go that can go back in the fridge um any more questions about anything that we've done or if it's not this recipe if there's other recipes or any um any alternatives so i know one of the big things for a lot of people at the moment is how can they adapt some of the dishes to a more plant-based diet um not necessarily vegan but just including more plants um rather than meat put them um, 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 um with a lot of the dishes that i have on the website um, a lot of the recipes they are all so easy to manipulate and change into all the different diet dietary requirements that people might have um, we've talked a little bit about other options here so if you don't want to have a meat um, based curry then chickpeas is a really really good source of protein and so on um, you can use lots of different veg you could um, add prawns into there you can add fish into there but just make sure that masala sauce is absolutely spot on and then um, you can add your other um, ingredients into there. So prawns good, fish is good. Um, just be aware if you're cooking those kinds of um, proteins, they do, you know, very, very long. So make sure then add your, um, your, your, your fish or your, your prawns or whatever, um, and then just cook it for a couple of minutes and then it's done. Okay. So um, what was that? Okay, my peas, it's nearly there, it's nearly coming to a boil. Okay. Um, said, Rhea has come up to her and gone, oh my God, that looks the same as Harry's. <gasps> what, the curry? Yeah, that's what Rhea said anyway. Well done, Lisa, loving it. Um, okay, so my rice is boiling now. I'm what I'm going to do is turn that right down. Lisa, are you making rice? Yeah. 
Christine, you're making rice? If you're doing it out of a packet, I'm going to be really cross. Um, lid goes on, um, and I've turned that right down to the lowest setting. Now, what we're going to do is move this. I'm going to move it to the smallest hob, and that is going to cook for 10 minutes while I move this over. 10 minutes. And what we are aiming for is turn that around. That all of the water in your rice has been absorbed and all of the grains of rice have elongated and they're beautiful and they're soft and they're delicious. Um, once the rice is done after those 10 minutes, I'm just gonna turn it off and I'm gonna leave it. One of the things that people always do when they cook rice is they will do this, they'll put the lid on and then they'll come back every few minutes and give it a little stir or take the lid off or mess around with it. Once your lid goes on, leave it. Don't mess with it, don't stir it, don't break the grains, don't do anything, just leave it. Let it do its thing. As soon as you take that lid off, you are letting all of the steam and everything evaporate and just you're losing the, the, the temperature and the cooking um, that's going on in that pan. So just leave it and just have faith that it will be fine. Um, once that 10 minutes is up, I'm gonna turn it off and then I'm going to, again, just let it sit for a minute and then I'll take the lid off. And then when that steam rises, again, you just a couple of minutes, just leave it and let, just watch the steam as it rises. And then you will get individual grains of rice all standing on end. Um, and that's when you know that you've done a fantastic job with your um, dish. Okay, any more questions while I'm yabbering on how are we all all with me still or has everyone gone are we all all right yep. okay sue how are we doing are you happy are you with me give me a thumbs up let me know christine i hope you're with me okay oh man it looks so good Right, so the rice is cooking, the lamb is doing its thing. I'm just going to get the last few bits ready. So I've got some um, um, coriander leaves, which I'm going to chop up and just, just pop to one side for a bit. Now, I mentioned last week, actually, that I'd launched a new ebook. Um, I don't know if any of you have had time to have a look at it or download it or, or anything, but I would urge you to have a look. Um, it's a new ebook, and all of the proceeds are going to frontline NHS workers. I think, from what I can remember, we've raised about £300 so far. So if you have downloaded it, I am very, very grateful. Thank you. Um, and as always, give me your feedback. Let me know what you think. Um, the book is not so much about um, curries uh, as, as some of my other... Um, publications have been about this is more about um store cupboard cooking so during lockdown when things are a little bit tough and and we're not really sure what to do and the kids are at home and everything gets a bit boring and it's just it's just some ideas and some inspiration as to how you can make things a little bit more exciting um, so the dishes are range from things like how you use leftover lamb in a tagine to um uh, what else have i got in there so i've got a tandoori tray bake um what else have i got a spice fish pie so things that you can bulk out for the family um but also ideas where you can actually get your kids to cook with you and and just make things a little bit more fun um i've got a couple of ice creams in there um but it's it's more focused around using a few spices but doing things for the family with store cupboard items so that you can make fun and exciting dishes together at a really, really difficult time. And it's all about healthy, easy and cheap. Um, and it's all available on the website. So if you go to the website, just download the, um, the ebook. Not only that, it's got loads of interactive con content in there, so you can click through to videos, you can, uh, it's not just about printing out an, a book and, and it's there, it's about all of that additional content that's in there, so you've got videos, you've got um, other information that you can access and various other bits, so please do have a look, and as I say, all of those proceeds and all of that money is going to the NHS and frontline workers, so please help me raise lots of money with food, 
Um, so funds for food, as I'm calling it. So please do that and, and share it. Share it to, with everyone and, and hopefully we can do some good while we're sort of all locked down and, and doing our thing at home. Right. How's everyone getting on? Oh, it smells amazing. Even though I do say so myself. It smells really good. So mine's pretty much there. If, you've, if you're cooking a chicken dish, you're probably coming to the point where it's ready. Um, and if you've cooked a veggie dish, I would say more likely than not, you're pretty much there, especially if you were doing like a tofu type thing, you're probably ready to go. Um, so to finish this, what we're going to do is um, a little bit of garam masala and I'm gonna put some um, fresh coriander in there as well. And then once the rice is done, I'll show you how to just finish that off. Um, and then you can all sit down and enjoy your amazing cooking and, and, and have your friends and your family, well, maybe not so much friends, but your family tell you how amazing you are because that is really important. If you spend the time cooking something, you want to be told it's amazing. Um, so I'm going to just check what this looks like. My family never tell me that. They never, ever tell me that. They just expect it. Right, I'm gonna take a little bit of the lamb out. I'm just gonna pop it on here and I'm just going to, with a knife, if I can find a knife, I'm just going to just slice through it, just so you can have a look. Oh, it's pretty much done, actually. Oh, oh my God. Okay. So depending on what cut of lamb you've used, um, you should pretty much be, oh, that's really nice. You should pretty much be at a point where it's just cooking through. So mine is neck fillet, and that's really lovely and tender now. So. I'm just going to show you what is so key about this dish and why it's called a buna. And this is what you would do with any dish. Well, a lot of people will say that, oh no, I quite like the sauce and the gravy. This dish is about a reduced sauce so you reduce it right down until it's thick and it's literally clinging onto that meat so once your meat is done and you're happy with it you then turn it right up so I just before I start that I'll just show you how much juice and gravy has come out so there's quite a lot of juice and gravy and it tastes incredible and you could if you wanted to eat it like that but that is not a boona a buna is a dish that's really, the only way of describing it is, it is that it's really reduced and it's really thick and, and um, all of the, the gravy has almost um, reduced down and evaporated until it's really thick. So what you do is you then turn it onto a really, really high heat and we are going to bun this. So the word bun, bun just means that you are reducing it and you are turning it and you are cooking it until you get that lovely unctuousness, so but that starts, sauce just completely the, reduces down. It's the chopping board, the chopping meat. So I wouldn't, a question just come through about chopping meat on a, on a chopping board. I would never use this to chop anything on. <laughs> Sounds a bit ridiculous, I know. Um, it's so beautiful. I always use one of these. I would never chop meat on a wooden chopping board because it's just not the right thing to do. Um, I just use these quite inexpensive, um, just covers, and I've got different ones for meat and veg and so on. I would never ever chop meat on this. Okay, so this is the important bit, the bun bit, which makes this a buna. And this is just going to completely change 
the look and the feel of this dish it's just going to completely reduce it all down so I'm just going to continue to do that whilst the rice cooks when you're doing this do be careful because you have got um, it's quite a vigorous heat and you've got those bits flying all over the place so I don't want you to burn yourself I don't want to ruin this lovely top do I um, so just be very very careful um, is everybody with me are we all pretty much on the same same page are we all cooking are we all burning I need feedback so that I know where we are oh it should really smell quite I don't know what the word is it's quite a it just smells really good is that the right way to describe it okay just keep giving that a stir through now um, one of the things that I mentioned at the very very beginning was about the onions um, a lot of people say to me when they normally cook a curry at home it ends up being either quite watery and not and not quite um, right when you cook a curry and you cook your onions properly the, you should not be able to decipher onions in that dish they should have all melted with the tomatoes and everything just breaks down so it's just a sauce it's not floating bits of onion all over the place and you got a bit of tomato it should have all come together and broken down so that it's a masala no no saffron's gone into the rice yet I'm waiting for my rice to cook once that rice is cooked then we will add the saffron in but before I do that I just want to pun my meat has anyone else tried their meat yet have we got to a point where you're having a little taste and making sure that it's it's cooked pardon I really want to see your pictures tonight guys make sure you take a photo we've got someone from Croatia's just joined us hi how you doing who's that have we got a name Shoss oh I think I don't know who you are but hello and welcome I hope you're having fun thank you for joining us so we are cooking a lambuna and we are cooking some peas with some rice for our Friday night curry club so welcome okay who else have we got any more questions this is your opportunity to ask some questions we're pretty much coming to the end of the dish now I just I just oh if I could share what my kitchen smells like with you I'd be a happy happy person and I hope those of you who are cooking along it's all coming together nicely. Look at that. So this bit is really important. Just make sure that you let it, let it, let it boil away, let it reduce. I know a lot of people will be saying, yeah, but I quite like a bit of gravy. And that's fine. Do you know what? That is fine. If you want to have a little bit more of a sauce in it, then you know, you can stop at, at any point that suits you. Um, but I'm going to continue to the just last, do that do mustard, oil? mustard oil has been raging so mustard I use mustard oil all the time um, I've got some in my cupboard I use mustard oil all the time um, we talked a little bit about this last time because I actually used it in the last dish that I did which was with the chicken um, we made butter chicken and I used the oil in that. So mustard oil is absolutely, in my eyes, fine to use. I know when you buy mustard oil in this country, it says for external use only. Um, and that is because back in the 70s, when they did a little bit of research on it, um, they did a couple of tests and it's, it was known to have high levels of e uric acid, um, which, is thought to damage the heart um, so for those purposes on the labeling of mustard oil it's and really it's all about import laws and so on they had to put on these um, bottles of mustard oil for external use only and that way they knew that there was a massive Indian community that were using this oil to cook with and they still do 
but in order for them to be able to ship it over here they had to put this labeling on there um my personal um interpretation is that i will use it for dishes that i want to use it in. i don't use it all the time i use it for very specific dishes um, it's got an amazing flavor it really does add something quite different um, and for a lot of people you're not going to be using it especially you know most people who don't have an indian household you're not going to be using it you'll use it once in a blue moon it's not going to kill you um, so unless you've got health concerns Generally, I think I think it's fine. How I pardon. What, how, like how best to use it? How you use it? So, if you're cooking a curry with it, um, with my store, what you want to do is you put it into a pan, you bring it up to smoking point, you then let it cool down, um, and then leave it, and then heat it up again and use it as you would any normal oil. You can use it in marinades. There's all kinds of different things that you can do with it. Um, it's it. it it is quite potent so don't use a lot of it but in vegetable dishes it's amazing so it's bombay mustard. potatoes and things like that it's amazing ground mustard, is that okay ground mustard is a completely different thing to mustard oil um mustard oil is the oil from mustard seeds that have been pressed you won't get the same flavor or anything if you don't if you're not going to use it, then just miss it out and just replace it. The closest thing you can replace it with is rapeseed oil. It's the same family. So rapeseed and mustard come from the same family. Just replace it with uh, rapeseed oil. Rapeseed is much softer. Mustard is much more potent. Okay, so coming back to the dish now, this is what I want to show you. This has thickened up and reduced down. And when I said earlier that... I'm going to move these away. When I said earlier that um, it's about reducing it until you've got a really thick masala, thick gravy, and also Is your the, the um, there's no onions. You can't de decipher the onions from um, the tomatoes. It's all cooked right down. Um, I am using boneless meat today. Can you see that? That is what you're looking for. So that last stage of bunning or bunning, booning is really, really important because that just brings out some amazing colour. It brings out the amazing spices and it just brings out the aromas of this dish. It's so, 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 so important. I am just going to have one more very quick little check to make sure that I'm happy and then I'm going to turn it off. So the rice should be off. So it's probably had about 10 minutes now. So just turn that off. I'm just going to very quickly look at that. Now, your lamb should be beautifully tender and delicious. Yeah, it's so good. It's a good time to um, adjust any seasoning. If you want to put a little bit more salt in, you can season it now. Oh, that's incredible. Really, really flavoursome. So if you cook chicken, if you've cooked a veggie option, can you give me a shout out? Let me know how it's come out. Are you happy with it? Does it taste good? So that is done. So I'm going to turn that off. I am going to, in a minute, add some coriander to it. Before I do that, we're just going to come back to the rice. Oh, it's all go today. I'll move this out the way. So my rice and your rice should be done. So I've left that on. I've turned it off. I've left the lid on. I'm just going to look at that. So we take the lid off, and this is really important. You let the steam, let the steam rise. That's what it looks like at the moment. Let that steam just rise and come through and let it just do what it needs to do. If in the meantime you have had got your saffron ready, now is the time. And what I'm going to do is just drizzle so we get little specks of saffron 
just running through the rice. And just let that sit for a minute. Oh, it looks so good. It looks so good. Where is my rice? My rice paddle has vanished. Okay. can't find it anyway okay so now the steam has risen now I don't know if you're going to be able to see it but can you see how the rice is standing up can you see the individual grains of rice on top can we see it no I'm gonna take a photo give me my phone I'll take a photo and I will share it with you just to prove that I'm not lying. Right, here we go. Take a little photo. All the individual grains of rice are standing up on end. Now what I'm going to do, so the saffron's <laughs> gone in, if you don't believe me. So now it's really important what you do. So with a fork, what you don't want to do is plunge straight in with a big spoon because you're gonna break the grains of rice with a fork very, very gently. Just push that through. So as you can see, there's no water at the bottom. It's not burnt, it's not stuck. You've got beautiful individual grains of rice. I'm just gonna mix the saffron up. Okay, that is what you're looking for. Look at that. How beautiful is that? What do we think? Are we happy? It smells amazing. Naya, what do you think? Let's have a little photo. Okay, so the rice is done. Were they coriander or cumin seeds in the rice? Cori, um, sorry. In the rice, it was cumin seeds, not, not coriander. You don't want coriander seeds in there, cumin seeds. Okay, so I'm just going to plate this up so that you can see. Now, if you want to, you could add a little teaspoon of garam masala. I know that's what it says in the recipe, but you can also just add, just to liven it up, just a little bit of that spice mix that we made and I'm also going to pop in my coriander and if you don't like coriander and there's a lot of people who don't just miss it out it's absolutely fine so I'm going to give that all a stir through it smells incredible so I'm just going to show you what it looks like in a bowl now I quite often say this you could have ordered a takeaway and yet yeah, you would have got maybe three or four dishes but it's not going to be a patch on a dish that you've cooked yourself for your family you know exactly what's gone into it you know exactly all the love and care that you've put into it on a friday night what could be better And that I'm just gonna put my rice on the side. Move this away. Over here. So there you go. How long have we been on? An hour? Maybe a little bit longer. But there you go. So there is my lambuna with peas and cumin infused rice with a little bit of saffron for a little bit of decadence on 
an amazing Friday night. I hope you've had fun. I hope you're all um, enjoying it. If you have still got your lamb in there, just let it simmer away until you're ready, until it's really delicate. And but that's what you're aiming for. Thank you for joining me. I hope you've had fun. Um, I hope you've enjoyed another Friday Curry Club. As I said um, at the beginning, we are gonna continue to do these for the next few weeks. So yes, I will be back on again next week, quarter past six. Um, I will let you know by the latest on Wednesday what we are going to cook. Um, it really depends on the weather. So I'll see what we're gonna do. Um, but thank you, I hope you've had fun, I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, please give me a thumbs up and please do share the channel with all of your friends and family so that they can join us and, and so on. Um, and as I said, take those pictures of your finished dish. I wanna see what it looks like, so share it with me on the app and on Facebook and so on. Um, thank you very much and I hope you've enjoyed it. So cheers, have a lovely rest of your Friday, take care and I'll see you next week.